Okay, welcome back to my channel. I'm Eve, the Creative Curator. This lesson for the Learn to Sew course that I'm providing for free here on YouTube is sewing machine stitches and uses. Now, this is probably one of the bigger, longer videos, purely because for me to edit it and cut it down to make it bite-sized, I'm not going to put all that work in. Like, you guys can watch it or you don't have to watch it, but I'm not doing extra work when I already did the work creating the content in the first place. So in this lesson, you're going to learn about the different sewing machine stitches for knit fabrics, the sewing machine stitches for woven fabrics, decorative machine stitches, and yeah, basically that, and creating a stitch library. I might cut the stitch library and do that separately. I'm not sure yet. You'll see by the time you get to the end of this video, you'll know whether or not I've done that. But basically, it's the process that I used in this online course to go through and show you the different stitches that my Banana 1008 could make and that you should do yourself for your sewing machine whichever one that you've got. There are so many sewing machines in the world, it would be impossible for me to show you every single stitch that's possible from every single machine. So I'm literally showing you every stitch option from my Benina 1008, which is an amazing machine. Yeah, so enjoy if you watch it. If you don't, then you're lost. <laughs> it's a good lesson. You can see the different stitch types and what their uses are for. And I will see you in the next one, which is the gathering stitch. Bye. <laughs>
and then we'll go to number two again lining up with the edge of my foot ta, my press effect backwards two as you can see it's taking longer um, because the stitch lengths are so much smaller I should barely be able to see it now can you see that it's quite tiny amazing the difference isn't it and that's number two so now I've done to number one this is going to take forever this one <laughs> And I'm only going to go halfway. Because we don't need to go all the way to understand how short that stitch length is. So you might be wondering, well, when would I use these tiny stitch lengths? Let's look at the difference. So this is number five, number four, three, two, this is one. You can barely see one. You can see that it's the tension is skewing on the back. Now we're going to take it to zero. Zero you would only use if you were making bar tacks or so you would actually use it with a zigzag stitch for bar tacks and um, buttonholes. So I want to show you what that looks like as a straight stitch. You ready? It's not moving. <laughs> okay, if I hit, I can't even hit back. It won't let me go back because I am at like no point. Look, it's just in, out, in, out. Zero does nothing. Um, but I did need to show you that. So if I trim that, I'm going to leave it. So I, oh no, it's just going to put it out anyway. Okay, fine. I was going to leave it to reference later, but hey ho. Those are my straight stitches. Those are the very basic, very like standard straight stitches that you get, that I get from my Benina. So what I would do now is I'm going to mark on them. I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to write five, four, one and there's no point putting zero in because zero disappeared and there we go i have that as a sample of my straight stitch i won't be able to trim there now because it's too the number five is in the way i'm so particular about some things okay so now we'll move on to the next lesson and i'll show you zigzag stitch with zigzag stitch we've got a lot more in terms of options first of all you're going to make sure that you have a press of foot that is open in such a way so this set section here that is going to accommodate the full width of my zigzag. So if I move my needle, you can see it's going down, it fits, and it's taking the other end. And you can see it's not hitting that internal section of my presser foot because there's about a millimeter or two either side. With a zigzag stitch, I'm keeping my needle in the center position, and then I've got a dial. Let me just move the camera so you can see. I have a dial here, you see? So I need it in the center and then I can change the width. This is the width of my zigzag from zero to five. And we're gonna start with that first. Then we're going to move on to how the length of your stitch affects the width. So I'm gonna put my stitch length at my standard three. So we're gonna start from here. Again, I'm going to maintain that edge of my presser foot and I've got it on a number three stitch length and I'm changing my zigzag to number five. Okay, so we're gonna see how wide she goes. Down with the needle. I'm going to back tack once, twice, and then on we go. And back tack. And we can see how wide that is. That's the reverse, and that's the main. So it's very loose, okay? Now we're going to change it down to number four. So we're still on a length of three, but I've changed the width. So the width from this side to this side of the zig and the zag. So there's a number five, we're gonna to change to number four. Line up the edge of my foot. One, two, and on. Two, back. Okay, we can see that that's smaller. This is where it, it skipped and went back separately, which you could strategically do and create a lovely cross stitch effect. But that's definitely narrower compared to the wider number five. So let's take it down to number three. And of course there are half measurements as well. It's just I'm saving time by not showing you all of those as well. Again, smaller still, down to number two. There we go. And then the last one we'll do for now is number one. So width one. Oh, you barely see that. It's so barely noticeable. Can you see? So five, four, three, two, one. Again, I'm going to mark in one, but I'm also going to bracket those, which I'll do here because it'll be easier for me to write on. So, so that's what I've just written in. So that's the stitch length of number three, and then these are the different widths, and you can see the differences there. 
okay so let's have a look at what that looks like if we're down number 1.5 let's halve the stitch length and let's go back to number five on the width for the zigzag there are many zigzags i'm going to show you others um, but those are technically the decorative one but so for now i just want to show you this so again starting from the top lining up the presser foot down with the needle back to so this is at a stitch length of 1.5 and we're at width five but I'm only doing a third of the amount and I'll show you why in a moment. Oh, I just snipped a snip like a plonk. Can you see how much closer together those are now that I've changed the stitch length to 1.5? Let me, I can't believe I just cut that stitch like a plonk. Let me change it down to four. So it's still 1.3 long, but four wide. You see the difference? So this is narrower, but close together. This is closer together compared to this number five. So number five, it's 1.5, number five at three. And then let's just, for the fun of it, let's go half again. So we're gonna do number two. No, we're not, we're gonna do number three because I wanna keep it consistent. Otherwise everyone might get confused. So we go down, one, two. So you can see it's like getting smaller and narrower. So this is number five, number four, number three. Let's do number two and we're gonna go the whole way. Okay, so just to reiterate, these four sections of zigzag at the bottom in the wind line, are all at a stitch length of 1.5, which means that the length between this stitch and this stitch, or this stitch to this stitch, and then this stitch to this stitch, the length from here is 1.5. Then the width of the stitch, so here to here, this was number five. This is a bit narrower at number four, narrower still at number three, and narrower still at number two. We didn't bother with number one in the end. If you compare, so the difference here for the number five, from there, if you were to square across, the distance here to here is much greater than the number five here when we only had a 1.5 stitch length. This is a three stitch length, so you can see it's greater. If I were to do, just for the fun, five and five, so I'm turning my stitch length to five, I've turned my stitch width to five, this is what it looks like. See, it's flying over the fabric surface. Ta da! It's very, 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 it's long and it's wide. It's the long, longest and widest zigzag I can do. Okay, so we've covered straight stitches, we've covered zigzag stitches. We will finish there and move on to the next session. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit more complex. So for me, for my Benina, you can see that I have different stitches. On the green side, I have a selection, and on the right side, I have a select. The red side, I have a selection. These, as I have mentioned earlier on, in a different lesson, refer to these. So I have the green stitches, I have the red stitches. If I change that dial to the red, then here you can see my dial set here. The green does the straight stitch and the zigzag stitch, which is what we've just covered in the previous. Um, few lessons. Now that it's switched to the red, this is what's going to be created. To show you, let's show you. <laughs> so we're going to start at the other end of my piece of fabric. The other thing to note is that we need to follow the instructions. So if you have an electronic or computerized, it will do all this for you. I have to manually um, do it. So let me show you that. For this section here in 910, I'm looking here and it says needle press a foot number one which is what I've got. It's saying zero to five stitch width, which is the zigzag level. The stitch length needs to be in number three, which I've just set it at, and that my needle needs to be in the center position, okay, which I've already done. And then these are my stitch, what my stitches will look like depending on how I change the stitch width. So I'm gonna put my press foot down. I'm gonna start off with a zero, and then I'm gonna work my way up through the stitch widths, okay, so you can see. I start with my needle down and I go back. Do you see that? So I didn't do anything other than reverse, but it still came forwards and backwards. Like it's not supposed to come forwards when I'm pressing backwards. So let me continue. Can you see that? It's doing a back stitch over itself. So watch what the needle is doing and the fabric is doing, okay? And my hands are both here. Okay, so that is at number one. 
And let me just unpick that so you can see. So it's a much thicker, it's gone over itself a couple of times. Can you see that? And we've almost got like a chain effect on the back where it's gone back and forth. It'd be nice for a decorative stitch actually, wouldn't it? Like if you're doing um, hand embroidery, not hand embroidery, machine embroidery or something. It's definitely a stronger stitch. So let's show you it on the zigzag. We're gonna do it right next to it so that we can do a comparison, okay? Um, I will do it as a number three width. So I've still got three length and I'm gonna do three width, okay? So I'm not even gonna press the button to go back because clearly that's gonna have no effect. Can you see that? It's doing the same thing. So each stitch is being stitched three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we'll keep going until the end of this line here. Ta -da. Can you see that? Can you see how much um, bolder that is, how much it stands out? See? Now, so you can compare that to let me do it like this and then we can see it more clearly. I need to write on here as well exactly what that was. Can you see the difference? So these are kind of like a bit like meh. These stand out a lot more and are stronger. It's almost like back stitching over itself, which of course makes it stronger because you have the multiple. It uses three times as much thread, of course. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You might be thinking, okay, cool. Okay, so that just makes them like a little bit brighter, right? Because you've gone over the same stitches three times what would you might actually use them for? Well, the straight stitch, you quite often would use for things like um, denim or if you're making like outdoor kind of wear. In fact, if I show you that at the width of number five, you'll get a better understanding of just how those stitch types can be used. So before we had it on number three, let's do the same to see the difference. And make sure that's on number three, yeah. Stitch length is three, cool. So that's it at number five wide as well. So you can see, I have to admit that I've never really used these stitches. They're quite loose on the back, but if you were using maybe multiple fabrics, like if you're sewing a felled seam or a welt seam, let's try that actually. Let's create and see what happens. I just want it to then go zero. That's it, to look at what it looks like after that. That is with like three layers of fabric. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense now. So if I was sewing a lapped or felled seam, you can already see that that's a much stronger, look at that, that's a really strong stitch line with the three layers. I don't like it so much with the zigzag, but that would work really well if you were sewing denim and you were doing welt seams and you wanted to have like a line of top stitching that was like strong, you could definitely use that triple straight stitch. That's really cool actually. Yeah, so there you go. So those two, triple straight and triple zigzag, you would use for like, yeah, denims, um, maybe with leather work, the zigzag might look good. And then outdoor stuff like rucksacks, you know, like heavier weight fabrics with canvas and stuff, rucksacks, sleeping bags, you know, garden furniture type stuff, anything that is a heavier fabric, I guess, you're gonna get a better effect. Right, moving on to the next ones. I'm gonna move it up to number four, because that's my universal stitch, and it tells me that I need a number four width, my needle in center position, and a stitch length of one. Oh, that's tiny. And then, so you would use these knitted firmer fabrics, like leather, um, knitted fabrics felt that kind of thing it's a universal stitch you can use it for joining seams and hems and patchwork and mending and all that kind of shenanigans so i'm just going to do it along here for now so you can see what it looks like it's a very square um stitch so you can see it's quite a standard not very exciting stitch um it's referred to by Benina as a universal stitch. I'm gonna find my pen and write down at number four. Let's do as if we were creating a seam. I'm gonna cut it up one second. I'm gonna cut, ta -da! So we're gonna sew it together. I really don't like working with knit fabrics on a sewing machine. I prefer to use my overlocker. 
Now, of course, you would use a smaller seam allowance probably um, because you're already going over the one centimeter. Like if you're overlocking or serging, you use seven millimeters. Um, so I could have gotten away with actually lining this up with the edge of the press of it. And we're going to stop there because we might use the very overlock as well. So if I pull that out, that is what the stitch looks like. You can see it stretches nicely. That's the, on the reverse. And if we open it, we have a nice stretchy seam. It's like, oh, yay. I will stretch and not snap. Okay, let's have a look at some decorative stitches while we've got the needle in the red position. So 16, we need to have number five width, number one length and central position and still the number one foot. So we're gonna start here and this is a decorative stitch, okay. Okay, our first decorative stitch. That's quite cute, isn't it? I feel like it could be a lot tidier. My gosh, look at the mess on the back. It's like a little scalloped stitch effect. Not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> um, let's have a look at number 15, which is even more. If I show you, so we've just done this one, number 16. Um, now we're gonna do number 15, which has got like swirly stuff going in it. So number five, we need a stitch length of two. Central, oh no, sorry, I mistook that, that is five two we've done that yep and then centered position and it's quite fun when especially if you've got a new machine doing something like this because you're like oh what are all the options i have okay hmm it doesn't seem to have the swirly bit in it that i thought it was going to have look at that that's a bit rubbish so for all intents and purposes it's supposed to go let me get my pointy thing up around and then down and create a triangle but that's clearly not working. That's rubbish. Um, so I need to write on here so that I know what's going on. So that was number six. Okay, on to the next one. So I realized that actually I forgot to change the lever. So this is number 16 and this is number 16. Um, I actually forgot to change the lever because I'm a plonk. So now I'm doing that now. We're in number five, number two, and let's do that properly. So you can see this is a one length and this is a two length. Okay, now we've got it on number 15. It's properly set up. Five across, two. Let's do that and see what it looks like. I think we're going to be surprised. Can you see? It already looks different. I don't know that it looks like the photo. Not the photo, the little eye um, thing. So this is the bit coming over. Then it should be curling under into a circle. And then a little cross. It's very skew if. Don't know that I'd ever use that one either. <laughs> Clearly I wouldn't because I haven't. <laughs> the only reason I'm creating this again after having like created it when I first got it is because I'm showing you guys how to do it. So we're gonna do 13, which is a edge stitch. So let me point that out to you. Number 13, edge stitch. Let's see if I can do it right this time. So we want a width of four, two and straight. Are you ready? Now it's technically an edge stitch. It says that it can be used for most types of fabric. Um, for like if you're sewing lace or other decorative edges. Obviously this isn't a decorative edge. Uh, we're just gonna see what it looks like on here. There we go, that will do. Ta -da! Oh, that's quite pretty. It looks like little flower heads. Oh, we've got a slip stitch there. Let me get my pointy thing. That, that's a bit of a wonky one. But you can imagine like if you did this along the edge of a hem or something and then you hand him I mean, would you want to hand embroider or attach beads to the top? It would kind of look like um, little flowers or something. It's quite cute. What does it look like on the reverse? No, oh, it's quite scratchy. There's a lot of thread there. So that is the number 13. So with these, you don't really change because they're decorative stitches, although technically 13 is a practical one as well because it actually is a finishing. But these are decorative. Um, you can see that changing from a stitch length of one to a stitch length of two, um, you can see that while this has a little bit of a kind of more finished feel to it, this doesn't. This is really scrappy. So you don't really change the um, settings for the stitches. Of course, if you have a electronic or computerized yours is actually going to be a case of pressing a button and it will do all the change its settings for you 
for me, I do have to manually set, you know, is it going to be a stitch length one? Is it a stitch length two? That kind of thing. And that is the downside, the only downside to a mechanical machine is when you have to make those changes yourself. Because obviously I thought this was number 15. And I was like, well, that doesn't look anything like a number 15. And actually I'd forgotten to change the leave off from number 16 position to number 17, 15 position. Right, let's crack on with the next one. So number 11 is the toweling stitch and it's for using with my, my booklet, my machine booklet says it's for denim, leather and other firm fabrics. You can do it for flat joining seams, visible hems for beach wear and craft work. So I'm going to create like a little fold like we did before. So it wants to go up to the edge of the fabric fold. <laughs> I'm going to stop there because I want space to write the number. Oh, that's so lovely. Can you see that? That would be really nice for like flat fold seams. Can you see that? So I folded it over to create. Imagine if you were doing a lapped seam. That's a really nice finish. So that's called the toweling stitch and it's literally a pointy thing. So two lines, so it's one, two, one, three, four, one, two. Actually, no, it's going back on itself as well. One, two, it's going up, one, two, so this must be three stitches. It's very similar to number nine and ten. I had to think of what they were. Um, the triple stitches. You've got much shorter along the bottom as reinforcing it like it's a really good strong stitch. Can you see that? Like you can't see the stitches underneath. Like you're trying to separate the seam. You can obviously this side because the zigzag or the diagonal is going up to them. Um, that's really cool. I really like that. I'm so glad that I've experimented with that again. And actually I'm going to test that out on some leather with a leather needle and see what the effect is like for lapping. I think that's going to look really lovely. Cool. So that is all of the red stitches done, the decorative and the practical. And now we're going to move on to the last few green stitches. We don't have a lot of space left. Hopefully we manage it. <laughs> But you can see how lovely that's coming along. Like I've got a really nice little stitch library there. Very, very cool. And then the last one is the scalloped edge, which is number eight, number five width. And then let's go with a number two to see what that looks like. This, oh, we, we've timed this really well. Look how much space we have. Perfect. That's rubbish. <laughs> that is the most rubbish scalloped I've ever seen. I mean, it's not like I would ever use it, probably. Look at that. That doesn't even count as scalloped. It's like a tiny little bounce. Can you see that? Does that even count as scalloped? No. I've got a tiny little bit of space here. Let's see. What if we do it as a number one? Oh, it's not going to work, is it? It's just rubbish. I want it to be like a really nice, tight. Let's try it at 0.5. Okay, I've tried it at 0.5. Let's see if this will work. You ready? That's better already. Okay, there we go. That's a much better scallop. It's still not amazing, but you know, it also looks nice on the back as well. So that is a much nicer scallop than number eight. So this was the original scallop that was clearly rubbish and this is a much better scallop and that was at 0.5. So there we have it. There's my like the selection of stitches. Obviously I can go a little bit deeper. So we've just finished with the scalloped one here and that was at 0.5. And if we compare it to the scalloped here, which is number eight, and that was at the, I can't even remember what setting I have that on now, number three, and it was rubbish. So what I could also do is of course, take a whole series of stitches of the number eight scalloped, but with all the different possible stitch lengths. Um, so that I have a library of, okay, what does this look like at that stitch and that stitch? And you can try it on different fabrics. So instead of having it on a medium weight cotton, maybe I would try it on this um, thinner weight cotton instead. Um, and the idea is that you're just building up a collection so you understand how, like, now I'm like, oh, this one is a really lovely stitch to have on a lapped seam, actually. And I'm going to go and get some leather um, scraps and I'm going to see what those look like with the leather needle and top stitching thread. I think it's going to look beautiful. And actually the scalloped edge will probably look really lovely as the edging, like as a decorative edge on leather as well. So just like having this in front of you as like a kind of like a library of stitch possibilities and experimenting with different fabrics, you, you'll just 
you'll be inspired. Like I'm getting inspired looking at them. Some of them are a bit duff, like these ones, number 14, I forget even what that was now. That one's just duff, really duff. Um, but that's fine because what I've discovered is by accident. So I thought this was my stretch stitch number five and actually what it ended up being was an incomplete number four. So I had done number four on woven and obviously I'd just done it as a line of stitching and I didn't change the settings. All I did was change the stitch width. I forgot to change it to number five. And so I've stitched the same stitch number four with a, a two width um, on the zigzag. And I've got this lovely, really simple, um, that's great for stretchy knit fabrics. You'll have happy accidents and that's perfectly fine. And just making a note of those happy accidents and put you in a good position. So I hope that you have found helpful. If you've got any questions too, please get in touch and then I will see you in the next section. Bye.